Hey everyone, uh, sorry, it was rocking out there to a brand new song by one of my friends and I'm so excited about this video. My, my son and daughter and I have watched it multiple times and we're gonna talk with the artist behind this song and we're gonna uh, share with you how you can watch it as well. This song is, is meant for kids and my favorite part about this is that it's, it's meant for kids and to help them kind of release stress during this time. So I don't wanna talk more about it. We're gonna bring on my buddy, uh, Brandon Williams. We're gonna bring him in and uh have him chat with you guys all day brandon how's it going hey okay how about yourself adam i'm doing good i just realized i was looking at the wrong camera that whole time i was doing your introduction but i have like two cameras set up and i'm so excited about this song man i know you and i have been friends for the past couple of years we met on the road at a conference but um for those of people that don't know you and your music and your education tell us who you are what you do uh my name is brandon williams i'm with early childhood tlc uh, I've been conducting trainings for early child care, or early, early education professionals uh, since about 2006. Uh, I was on the national training team for an initiative called I Am Moving, I Am Learning. Um, I established Early Childhood TLC uh, back in 2015. Um, I released my first children's music album in January of 18, released my second children's music album in April of 19. Uh, and then we will start recording our third album here soon, and it should be available uh, before the start of next school year, whenever that happens. Um, my thing that makes my music a little bit different than most is I'm kind of doing a little bit of a Weird Al Yankovic type of thing where I mock a lot of mainstream songs. Um, I have songs like called the Pre-K Nene. Uh, I have one called uh, Act Like a Dinosaur that mocks uh, Walk the Dinosaur from the 80s. I have a song called Poop and Pee that mocks Shoot by Salt and Pepper. Um, so my tagline I like to use is children's music mainstream sound. Yeah, and I, I had the opportunity to hear you you speak when we were together in Maine a couple years ago or last right. year and got to see you teach teachers how to do these dances. It was a blast, man. I, I became a fan of yours right away and uh, got to know your family a little bit on that trip and so excited to see your wife and your daughter and your your dogs in this this video that we're going to show here at the end. But um, I, I just I love your passion for what you do. And I know that you mentioned you've been doing this for the past six years, this work from home thing. This is new for me. And I know a lot of teachers right now, this is brand new to them. Uh, yeah. We're in uncertain times. Like you mentioned, who knows when the start of the year is going to be. Uh, it, that My guest yesterday or the day before said it's, it's just uncharted waters right now. A lot of people don't know what, what's going on. And the hard part about this is as is, is much as teachers are pushing their, their passion out there, because teachers are doing amazing work right now but parents have become teachers too. So I guess I'm looking for your advice, man. Like whatever it is that you can give advice to teachers or parents, anybody that's now in this situation from working at home. And then I wanna hear about some of this, this movement because I know that's a big passion of yours is getting kids up and moving. You mentioned that initiative you're a part of. So let's start with the tips first. I know you got tips for working at home and then go into maybe some of your ideas of, of I know you've talked about videos on your, your Facebook and YouTube and and how to keep kids active. So, so let's, I'm gonna turn it over to you and let's talk, man. Cool, all right, hey everybody. So um, yeah, I've been working from home for uh, over six years now, and it's something that is definitely, you, you keep working at it and you get better at it over time. Um, and I'm just gonna share some tips that have worked for me uh, while I've been working from home. Again, I know everybody's different. Everybody's in a different situation. Um, some of these tips may work for you. They may not work for others, but I at least hope to give you some ideas to, uh, help improve your productivity uh, while you're working at home. And again, this is kind of for everybody, uh, not necessarily just directly for teachers. I can't speak from experience teaching remotely. Um, all of my presentations are typically done face to face, um, but I do um, the majority of my work um, in my own in my own home. So these are my tips for uh, being really productive or productive as possible uh, while working from home. Uh, uh, tip number one is to get changed. Just don't go to work in the same outfit that you slept in. And I'm not saying get dressed up. I'm just saying put on a different shirt, put on some more, a different pair of comfy pants or a different pair of shorts. Um, do something to, to just change your wardrobe so you're not showing up to work in the same clothes you slept in. Um, for some of the other folks out there doing something with your hair, putting on your makeup, that may uh, make you more productive as well. So that's tip number one, get changed, get ready for work. But again, it doesn't mean get dressed up. Uh, tip number two, this is something that I've always done uh, that helps get my day started off productive is I do something productive around my house 
that I can see. Uh, it's kind of like after I mow the yard, I get instant gratification of seeing a job well done. Kind of the same concept fits in this. So whether it's just simply making my bed, uh, whether it's simply doing the dishes that are in the sink, picking up uh, the, the, the kitchen table, um, whatever it is, it's something that some type of productivity that I can physically see around the house. And then that gets my day started off to a productive, uh, to a productive start. And then that carries on and over to my work. Um, tip number three would be to make sure your, your work area is clean and organized one, but then two, uh, you're going to get tired of probably you're going to get tired of working in the same area in your home all the time. So I, if you can try and have a couple different areas that you can work from. So, um, I personally believe a scattered and an organized work environment leads to unproductive scattered thoughts uh, and, and unorganized work time. So I always like wherever I'm working, I try to make sure that that is fairly well organized and clean. Um, if just to make sure that you don't use cleaning and picking things up for your work area as a way of procrastinating though, because I've been guilty of that myself and then delays my, the start of my, of my work day. Um, if you find yourself doing that, clean that area up a little bit the day before you're going to go to work. Um, so places that I work in my home, my designated office is in my basement, um, which is where I am right now. We have one small window and a, only a little bit of light comes in through that, that window. It just kills me to work from my basement on a day when it's nice outside. Um, on those days, uh, we have, again, we have a small two bedroom house. Um, and this may not work for some people at all, but believe it or not, there are days where I actually work from my bed. Um, and I work from my patio too. Now I have a little like work desk thing. This thing just sits on my lap. I've had this thing for six years. It actually used to have little legs that folded down and fold it in, but uh, those have broken off over time, but I still use this thing. And you can actually see that it's missing the little uh, piece that should be on here, but I kind of like that because then I can put my leg out over here on one side. You don't need to have something like that, like straight up a cardboard box would even work. You could cut the little box, a little part off the bottom, just something to keep that heat off of your lap. Um, so again, that tip would just be to have a couple different areas in your home. Um, where you can work from and, and have that area be fairly tidy. Um, I do have some workspace essentials that I would like to share as well. Um, you know, if you can set a designated time to work um, and, and just think of the, the environment that you're in, your lighting, uh, whether you use lights in, up in the ceiling or whether you're using a lamp. Um, I found lighting can have a, a pretty big effect on uh, my productivity, my mood. Um, whether I do a lot of work at night too, and my environment at night is different than my environment in the day. At night, uh, my music is pretty soft. I usually almost always light a candle that has a good smell to it at night um, and soft lighting as well. Um, almost all the time when I work, I have music playing and I listen to all different kinds of music and depends on my mood is the type of music that I'll pick or if I'm feeling tired, maybe I'll pick uh, some uplifting and, and music that's pretty upbeat. Um, I listen to rap, hip hop, classic rock, smooth jazz, uh, big swing, big band music from the 40s. I really listen to it all. Sometimes when I'm trying to focus on something, though, I've noticed that music that doesn't have words works best for me. Um, so I'm not hearing other words that can convolute some of my thoughts. Um, make sure that you have uh, essentials. You all have a drink with you. Maybe have a snack with you because a quick trip to the kitchen can turn into a 30 minute detour that you didn't expect and really get you off task. But if you set yourself up to where you have everything in place, you don't have to leave your workstation, your work area, uh, you're more likely to uh, keep on being productive. Um, and speaking of productivity, again, this won't apply for everybody, if, if, but if you have some flexibility, try not to force productivity. There are times, especially when back in the day when I had to punch the clock, there were times I was like, man, I may as well not even be here because I'm here, but I'm not being productive. Working from home, you might not have to work if you're not being productive. Now, there is a little bit of a trade-off. And so, for example, if um, today it's supposed to be pretty cloudy and dreary, but the sun's out, the weather is broke, and it's just going to – I like to run. I'm going to stop working. I'm going to go for a run, and I'll make up some of that time later on today. So um, I'm swapping now for later knowing that i'm going to have to make up that time later 
uh, during the quarantine this time, Saturdays and Sundays really don't matter to a lot of us. It's like Groundhog Day with Bill Murray. It's the same thing over and over and over again. So if the week forecast is rain, but you have one day of sunshine, can you trade that Wednesday of sunshine for your rainy Saturday? Can you do that? And if you can, that's something that you might consider. Don't really try and stick yourself to that Monday through Friday schedule if you really don't have to. Um, Two tools that I found that help me work from home, Google Calendar. I live and die by Google Calendar. If you're not familiar with it, you can set multiple calendars up. I have a personal calendar. I have a calendar for conferences. I have a calendar for uh, my education consulting business, and I live and die by that. You can set uh, appointments in there. You can set reminders. I have a call tomorrow at 930. I have a reminder set up to where my phone will ding, and I can set increments of how how early you want that reminder to pop up five 10 15 minutes before mindset for 10 minutes before um so google, google calendar is another great tool um another one uh i know many of you especially if you don't work from home regularly you may not have a printer but if you do have a printer you might not have a scanner um i use an app called adobe scan it's an app on my on my phone and you literally just use it to take a picture of whatever document you're going to be you want to uh, scan and send to somebody after you take the picture, you can crop it down, just flip the page, take another picture until you've done every single page, and then you hit a button, and then it uh, puts it all into a PDF, and then you just hit the share button, and you can send it out. So that is Adobe Scan. Um, if you decide to check that out, just go to YouTube, uh, YouTube, and search for Adobe Scan App Tutorial, and you'll find uh, several very easy, uh, quick videos on, on, on how to use that Adobe Scan app. Um, and this is be, be my last tip, and this is a, a tip for right now in the current situation that we're in where there's a lot of people working from home, trying to be productive while your kids are also still there. And my wife and I are included in this group. Uh, we have a 20-month-old baby, and uh, it's a challenge. And the way that we're doing it is that we're taking shifts, and typically I'll either work in the morning shift until around noon or so, or I'll work an afternoon shift and work from – around one or till five um so reed's getting about four or five hours in during the day and then oftentimes we're finding ourselves working at night it's not an ideal situation but it, it's, it's what's working for us um i was daddy daycare though uh when after we had our baby for almost two months because we didn't have daycare she was born july 30th my wife had about eight weeks of uh, uh unpaid maternity leave and uh she had to go back to work and we still didn't have daycare for another two months so i was daddy daycare and at first i tried to work while i was also watching the baby and i had those expectations upon myself to do that and then finally after about two weeks of frustration um i gave that up and i said you know what i'm just going to focus on taking care of my baby uh, during the day and that's all I'm going to worry about. And when she goes to bed, that's when I'm going to start my, my, my work shift. And so I started working at night. And again, it wasn't what I wanted to do, but it really helped out my stress level. And for some of you folks, um, I know, especially at this point, your kids might be working your nerves, um, really interrupting your workflow. Please give yourself permission to stop working and devote time to your kids. Your kids typically aren't doing anything wrong. And a lot of times if they're annoying you, if they're acting out, they're, they don't have the communication skills to tell you how they're feeling and what they want. But that's what they're telling you is that, hey, I want your attention. Come play with me for a little while. Stop what you're doing. They, they don't really understand exactly what all is going on and, and what you have to do. They just know that you're home. Um, so give yourself permission to take a break from work have some designated time with the kids, play with the kids, but also, especially if your kids are old enough to understand, let them know that, hey, I need some undivided, I need some uninterrupted time on my own so daddy or mommy can work so I can get things done. I promise you that I'm gonna stop here and then we're gonna play again. Just like in a good time to address that is right after you've had some bonding time, some play time with your kids. Okay, I have to get to work, but here's what you need to understand and, and, and look them in the eye and, and, and uh, genuinely tell them those types of things and, and they'll get it and usually they'll, they'll listen to you. But the big tip is to try and take some time off away from work, especially during the day when you might be expected to be working, devote that time to your kids and then later on, make up for that work time. If there's any bosses out there listening, 
please be understanding of any of your employees working with children. We're doing the best we can with what we got, and uh, we're all in this together. So uh, those are my tips for having a productive at home work life. So please give it a try, guys. Those are good, man. I, I think those are perfect, not just for teachers right now, but for parents working from home right now, and even kids. I, I know I loved your tip about uh, swapping days. My son yesterday was was not uh, ready to work on his e-learning at all. And it was a beautiful day outside here. So he said, listen, buddy, like we can go outside and play now and just do work later when we're chilling, watching TV or maybe. And he was just fine with that. And it worked really, really well. So another one of my friends just posted a picture this morning of her three kids running around her backyard. I saw and she was just chilling on her patio and said, e-learning will be there later, but the, the weather won't. So right. that's a good tip. None of this is, I mean, yeah. We cannot expect anybody, any child right now to be doing the same thing they would be doing at school because right. the, the the environment is different. The situation of who's teaching them is different and the world around them and the stress is so different right now. So those are perfect, man. Those are perfect tips for, for right now. But I, I felt like you were, I felt like I was taking notes because I'm like, well, my desk is a mess right now. And I did change my shirt today, <laughs> but <laughs> I like hey, that, man. man. It's, it's good to know. And my, I think the environment is a huge one too. I know my wife, has been doing Zoom calls with her class. And this is like, should we call it my office, but it's it's our living space down here. You know, it's kind of my decorated, but um, yesterday she did a Zoom call from upstairs in our living area where there was natural light coming in. And even as soon as she was done, she's like, man, I enjoyed that so much better. Like I didn't feel like I was in a dungeon and I, yeah. I saw the light. So it's it's amazing. Yeah. It sounds so so cliche to say, but that can have a powerful impact on on the way you're working. It really can. It does. I mean, just think about that. Just the, the, the lighting. I mean, the temperature, the sounds. I mean, all of that really does come into play. I mean, my, my patio is one of my favorite places to work on, on a nice day. Now, it does have a roof over top of it. Um, if you don't have a roof over top of it, it's, you're going to have a lot be fighting the glare from the sun. It's going to be hard to see your screen. Um, but I'm taking a little blue little boom box out there with me. I'm taking my tunes right. with me, man. I'm taking my little laptop desk. Um, I'm taking my water, my snacks. And so that's where I'm camping out, man. I mean, yeah, I love working outside. It was, it was nice here this morning and I was working on a project that had a deadline of today. And I sat out front on our, we have like a little, not a patio, but in our front yard, like a little, I guess, porch kind of thing. And, uh, sat out there and clicked away and drank my coffee. And it, it was, it was a beautiful way to start the day. So I appreciate that. So yeah, it just changes some of the mundane things that we're all going through right now sometimes you just need you just need a change man and yeah sometimes that's all it takes is different place different time different setting trying to change your lighting change your music change your room change your work spot um if you find yourself getting into a rut which a lot of people might be starting to get into right now totally. because we're about five weeks in so give some of those things cool. a try right? All right, so um, I kind of was rocking out to your video at the beginning there. I've known your music from seeing you speak. You mentioned that you're all about getting kids up and moving. So your Facebook page is Early Childhood TLC, correct? Correct. And you're going to start doing, or you have been doing, I know your videos on there are amazing. You're going to start. One thing, listeners, that, that Brandon's awesome about, not just working from home, but trying to keep up with with what kids need. And I know you you've been passionate about that getting videos out there for kids. So I highly encourage you, if you have not followed his page, please go do so, Early Childhood TLC. And watch for, I'm gonna put you to this, Brandon, watch for weekly videos from Brandon Williams. There's, now you're now you're held to it. You gotta start doing it. <laughs> I made the commitment to it. So the last week I did a, a Rhyme Ram Sam Sam. Um, this week I did a video with two of my songs, the Pre-K Nene and Act Like a Dinosaur, and it's nothing fancy. Um, but last week when I did the two songs in a row, it was about eight minutes or so. And, and kids need those brain breaks. And mm -hmm. this is something that some schools do a really good job of implementing and some of them don't. But one thing I always say in my presentations is that a car runs on oil and gasoline. Our brain runs on oxygen and water. And whenever we get up and we get moving, we increase our heart rate. We increase our blood flow. We increase our breathing. We give our brain the fuel it needs to think, to learn, and to concentrate. So, um, you know, depending on how, how old your kids are, you know, don't have unrealistic expectations for them to sit down, be still, and complete work. Please give them permission and provide some activities for them to do. If you need some ideas, uh, go check out my Facebook page or my YouTube page, Early Childhood TLC. Very cool. Yeah. And set up those notifications, people, so that you, you know everybody's got their phone on them at home. 
when Brandon posts a video on Facebook, set up notifications so you can watch it. And I know my kids and I watched the one I'm going to put the link for and we're going to talk about is your new uh, COVID-19 song. My kids were, were loving it. So let, let's talk about that real quick. Then we're going to link it for everybody. Um, what I love about this song that you put out, and you kind of saw a video there at the beginning, everyone, was that, that this is super fun, positive, and, and I guess energetic based around something that is completely negative, right? So yeah. how did you come up with this? What was your, your reasoning behind it? And, and, and then we're going to talk about how people can find it. Well, first I had a couple of my friends uh, get a hold of me and say, hey, man, uh, you need to come up with a coronavirus song. Um, and so I was like, yeah, I've been thinking about it, but uh, had some other things that I had to wrap up and take care of first. So um, that was the first thing is I had some of my good friends uh, put the bug in my ear. Uh, then, you know, you start hearing a lot of uh, complaints from people. And you see different posts on Facebook and stuff from people from unreliable resources. And no matter what, you can always go to the CDC. And that's like our go to resource for right. Right. recommendations for preventing the spread of it, and what to do and everything else. So all I did was I went to the CDC website. I looked at all the recommendations for preventing it, what to do if you think you have it, when to get tested. I uh, recorded all those down. I broke them up into different categories, which a lot of the categories are already given to me on the CDC website. I just threw them into a, just threw them into the song. Um, I kind of got lucky with the chorus. It just popped in my head one day when I was running. It was just like, you know, let's think about it. And uh, the original version was like uh, COVID-19. Uh, don't don't get it don't spread it, don't want it. it was the chorus wasn't that great but what i've been doing a lot of when i struggle with writing a song so i write and sing all of, all the songs i have another gentleman named daniel carbiol he does everything else i don't play an instrument or anything he does all of that but when i'm struggling with uh some lyrics i post to my facebook page and i ask the teachers and the people follow my facebook post and i say hey help me out i need your help writing lyrics to this song and if you actually scroll down on my on my news feed you'll see that post where i'm saying here's option one here's option two vote for them i'm not crazy about this line though so please give me an idea for it and i had two girls say the word prevent and then i was like man that's it i need to have the word prevent in there and so then that kind of just morphed the morphed the course over to it. but yeah i then making that video i did uh, three votes um when I, you'll see the dinosaur fall you go scroll yeah. down my yeah. page i said i gave him like four dinosaur falls to vote on i said choose your favorite and uh the other one was uh, richard simmons when i dressed up like richard simmons i had four different takes of that one on there and i said vote for your favorite in the comment and uh even though a lot of times it's not the one that i think is gonna win the one that i think is the funniest uh, i use whichever one wins on the vote and uh so that's how some of my stuff comes together. So I, I have a lot of thinking to do for, for people who, the teachers out there, a lot of Head Start teachers especially who follow my page. Head Start does a lot of really great work, and I know a lot of schools do it all around the country as well. So many schools and so many school districts and Head Start programs are still feeding kids now because they know that they're not going to get it anywhere else. Right. So hats off to all you guys out there doing that. You guys are awesome. And, and, and thanks so much for what you guys do. You don't get paid nearly enough uh, for what you do. You don't get recognized nearly enough for what you do. So from Adam and I, myself, uh, thank you guys so much for doing all that. It means a lot. Well, thank you, Brian. That's a, that's a perfect place to, to segue into the end of this. That's awesome. So if you guys want to see dinosaurs and Richard Simmons and coronavirus. Jason, all over the Friday the 13th. I hope Jason, that doesn't scare anybody. It's so good. He's a friendly good. Jason. He goes to the doctor. <laughs> I'm going to roll a little piece of it here. You're not going to see the whole video, though, because I want you to head to Brandon's page so you can get updates on all the videos. So early childhood TLC. Just search it on Facebook. You're going to see, see his, his page there. Uh, YouTube as well. We'll link it all below. Brandon, thank you so much for taking time away from your baby and, and your amazing wife and uh, hanging out with us today. I appreciate this, man. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks for sharing this out. It means a lot, man. Good dude. Keep keep up with this guy. Good hey, thank dude. You. Like him a lot, man. And he wears a backwards hat all the time, too. <laughs> we got something in common. All right. Take okay. care, guys. Have a good one. It's just for now, but it's time for us all to hunker.